Cities Skylines is beautiful. Everybody, welcome back. I'm Yumble, and today I'd like to discuss city starts in city skylines. So you just got city skylines, and now you're going to start a city. I think that's a great idea. I think that's a really good strategy in this game is to is to begin building a city, but it's also very flexible. How do you do that? How do you build a city successfully, and what's a good starting point? These are the questions I'd like to answer today. The first one that I'd like to showcase, I'm going to call it the Jedi mind trick, because Imperial Jedi sort of popularized this uh, this technique. We're going to use two-lane road to get this going. Two-lane uh, two one-way road to simulate a continuing highway. So it's as if the highway never stopped coming in, but we're using non-highway roads because at the beginning you won't have access to highway roads. I'm also going to be sure to keep these fairly short since we can't really afford too much uh, too much road right now. So I'm just going to add on a little extra. And there we go. The way that I got that curve to work was by using the freeform road tool. If you use the freeform road tool and then rely heavily on your guides, you can always get the spacing perfect. So if you're ever trying to have two parallel roads, that's a great, great approach. Use freeform road tool and use your uh, snapping options. Um, I'm going to make a ramp that goes over this right now. So we're going to use our four lane, uh, four unit also road. I'm just going to go a few units from the road so it's wide enough that we can upgrade it to highway later if, if uh, you so desire. But I'm going to go perpendicular off the sides of this in kind of the same spot on both sides. So what we're making right now is actually an interchange. It's a diamond interchange that will allow traffic to enter and exit the highway. Let's reconnect these using that two-lane one-way road once again. We have to connect traffic back to the highway. We also have to connect it on this side coming off the highway. And you can mirror that on the opposing side when you're ready. Let's do something crazy. I'm going to use some angles to make this happen. So I'm going to go, what did I do? 10, 12 up and 5 over. And I'm just going to see what that what that does. It gives me this end point here. You can retain that end point by making another road off of it if you want. Just some scaffolding. But using that freeform road tool, you can come off this one perpendicular. Yeah, that should work fine. And let's just run this straight back into the highway. Love it. You can hit the upgrade road tool and right click a few times to get these turned in the correct direction. So traffic now has a way to get through this if they so desire. Diamond interchange. If you want to complete the whole interchange, go crazy. Well, you don't have to. You're starting a city, so save your money and actually don't build the same thing. But it would be the same thing on the other side in principle. So it should make roughly something shaped like a diamond. Now you can take your four lane road and do whatever you want with it, because now you're in the city. <laughs> what I would do in this situation is probably have the road turn this way, because I imagine they would have settled along the river here um, in this pocket, and then maybe the train came in once this area was settled. So I'm going to make an at-grade crossing right over here. Bingo. And then we are in this area. I'm actually going to curve this one and make it look like it's coming uh, perpendicular off the off the train tracks. But that does it. That suits my purpose. And then to add access to this area, I'm probably overbuilding at this point. I'm probably going to run you out of money if you decide to, to play this way, but road hierarchy wise, I want to connect my large roads to my large roads. Okay? So I want to be... connecting highway to arterial and then expanding the arterial network until we're ready to add, let's say, collector roads. So this is where I deviate from the, the Jedi mind trick. I would say that this is essentially the, the core of it. I've built a... This could be considered a collector, perhaps, in road hierarchy. I'm not sure. But I'm going to add some local roads coming off of this one. I'm going to keep using the curved road tool a little bit to add some character and then flatten it out straighten it out and maybe this kind of comes back and follows the road here follows the the highway for a little while by this point i've almost certainly run you out of money but what we have here 
is uh, is a good way to start either industry or residential. You want you want to keep the two separate, but this road can have other roads coming off it if you so desire. But something like this would be totally acceptable. Let's say there's a, a bit of a, a block here. Great. And that can become residential or industry. And then once you have the ability to add paths, maybe you have it right from the beginning. I don't remember, but you can always add in paths here to kind of complete the picture. So we're spreading the conflict out, uh, the traffic conflict that is. This, is. this whole thing is really an exercise in defeating traffic if you want to get to the heart of it. But this overpass sort of system here allows us to separate the traffic that's going from this area to this area over this bridge by separating the through traffic on the highway. I strongly recommend really thinking ahead when you're when you're looking at this type of stuff. Like think where might this go? What might I include? Where do these like roads generally have a place that they're going to, right? So <laughs> so try to think of where they're going. It would be great, I think, if the highway went to maybe a train station and then it turns around and comes comes back or something and then traffic can get on and off the highway here. Maybe there's another interchange somewhere else, uh, but it depends. I'm not really advocating overuse of the highway, but a the highway is kind of a necessary uh, <laughs> necessary evil when it comes to starting your city, typically. Maybe, uh, maybe this does something like this, and, and something gets nestled in the armpit of the interchange, as I like to say. And then this continues down here. This is very freeform, kind of flowing vibes. But I would recommend putting either industry over here, or separating your residential from your industry. Or your residential from your industry. Just pick a side and separate them due to pollution reasons. Uh, but I think that that is a very effective city start the Jedi mind trick, or the diamond interchange start. But what if you don't want to bring the highway into your city? Which is understandable. Highways are not super fun to live next to, but we still need a major kind of auto route for vehicles to, to have access to our starting city. In this case, I'm going to take a six-lane road. I'm going to find the guide coming off this road, and I'm going to make a little teeny tiny road to connect the highways to. Or maybe it involves eventually like just coming down off this. Let's let's even mimic what we did earlier. I'm just going to use the freeform road tool and do that, which sort of mimics the curve that we did initially last time. But the way that you connect this part is by using, if you have access to three lane road or highway eventually, at the beginning, you're only going to have two-lane road, so let's just face the facts and uh, bite the bullet here. Freeform road tool coming off the highway. Awesome. Freeform road tool coming straight off the other highway. Connect to that point. Turn this one backwards. Uh, you'll notice the arrows do something a little funky there, but you can always adjust out of that, of course. And really, for, for this to work right, I would strongly recommend using the three-lane road, or better yet, once you've unlocked the highway, immediately upgrade that to highway. So it so it kind of makes the most sense, right? That would be the best way to do it. But what we've done here is functionally taken the highway and downgraded it, not in any real functional sense, but we've made it smaller, we've made it quieter, we've made it a bit slower, um, made it a slightly better place to live next to while still having a major road coming into your city because that's, uh, that's pretty important. You'll see a lot of people throw a roundabout at the end of this, which is not too, too difficult to do. I'm going to try to do a three-lane roundabout here. See how it looks. Three-lane, one-way road. Using the curved road tool now, you can measure out maybe four or five units. I'm going to do four. Keep it kind of small. And we're just going to do four units over and over. Four units out, four units up. Awesome. And then maybe... Maybe there's just four lane road coming off of this. This one may not scale quite as well because we are, uh, this assumes that there's less traffic coming into the city because this would be the weak point of the whole thing right now. Your entire auto system is hinging on a single interchange, which is fine, that's a great interchange, a trumpet, 
but it's also hinging off this roundabout. So keep that in mind. If you're doing this method, I strongly recommend increasing highway access. So having other ways in and out of the city so that this is not the only implement that your whole system hinges upon, right? Food for thought, think ahead. Uh, maybe this would do the same thing. Maybe this comes down and uh, and connects to the um, to the rail like I had on the other one. The lines can be similar as we use the the built-in kind of geography of the map, the the natural features, the rail lines that are automatically built in by the map creator. So maybe this continues up and coming out, coming around curving down and following this road, however you want to do it. I'm getting kind of crazy here, but I still recommend probably separating your industrial from your residential or your industrial from your residential. I don't really care which side, as long as you don't build the residential right next to the industrial, because your, your houses are going to have a very hard time upgrading if that's what you do. But you can come off of this, continuing on, and then maybe this becomes a neighborhood. Maybe this is uh coming off of here and you can do a you can do a grid. There's nothing wrong with a nice the nice grid. I think its biggest flaw is that it's a bit uninteresting. But it is functional because the connectivity is so solid. And once again, we're still respecting road hierarchy. So we're going from largest road and then down a level to I would call this maybe a collector in this situation. If this is an arterial, this can be a collector. Or maybe this is, let's still look at this as highway. And maybe this is the arterial. And then this is the collector. And then these are the local roads. The most connections, a few less connections. Less connections on the arterial. These intersections being connections. And then almost no connections later. By the time you get to highway, there's just one connection every very long distance. I would probably do an interchange over here though. And then connect this area so that the whole thing holistically has another highway connection and better access overall without overdoing the number of interchanges on the highway. But yeah, I think that is a fine start. Of course, we'd have to add power and water, stuff like that. Um, let's see uh, Let's see what other way we could start a city. Here is one of the less used city starts that I don't really see implemented in game very often, but I call it the Virginia Beach start. Now, Virginia Beach is this beach community in Virginia on the east coast of the USA, but they have the highway going towards this grid and just kind of disappearing into the into the gridded city that is Virginia Beach. So let's imagine that this is where that starts. Let's say there's uh, some sort of a, a east-west arterial going, you know, a perpendicular arterial. This could also be effectively one-way roads. In fact, that's how I think they do it in, in Virginia Beach. So let's, in the spirit of that, <laughs> I'm just going to do it. One-way roads all around. Now on this side, I'm going to pick some amount. And we're going to have to get the highway to this position, whatever amount I pick, gracefully. So we'll have to get this side to come out over here. Let's see how that might work. I'm going to use the freeform road tool to go back a little ways. And then I'm going to use the non freeform, the curved road tool, and just go to the guide that the highway shows, that guide right there. And we're going to turn back that away. And that's all supposed to be highway. You'll unlock that later. Two lane, two lane one way road is a good proxy for highway until you've unlocked the highway. But now we've just got to pick the directionality of our one-way roads and kind of establish a, a balanced network. And we'll flip this whole thing backwards. So maybe that's one, uh, one layer for you to begin. And then you can do the next layer by taking non-highway road. I would try to end the highway as soon as possible. But this is just a way to kind of shave off layers of highway. So maybe this road continues straight down for, let's say... 14 units. No, 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 no. 12 units. 12 units. We'll leave a little bit of space in between. And this side can be the same. The same-ish. I'm just making this up, but it's inspired by Virginia Beach. I don't know that it's the best layout in the world, 
but I am intrigued by the by the grid layout and uh, how it works there because it actually works very very well. The goal is just to filter out cars layer by layer until you finally make it to the beach. So here we go. I think that kind of does it does it a bit of justice. You can see the lane arrows here, the the directionality of the roads. There are one-way roads as the highway becomes less of a highway. And the highway can actually go from three lanes down to two lanes eventually, and then kind of disappear entirely into this bi-directional road system. Because right at the coast, like we're at, we're at the end here, you know, unless you plan on having a bridge, which is, which is valid as well, but if you hit the end of your map or your coast, two-lane road is fine because it's probably not going to have that much traffic on it anyway. It's kind of an edge road. Um, but to complement this sort of network that we have here, I would even recommend doing a second kind of thing. Keep it cool, keep it interesting. Perhaps this one starts as a bit smaller of a road and goes up a couple levels. And then at the same time, it turns into three lane over here. Maybe this turns into a full avenue type thing. Four lane with grass, our old friend. That's great. And then that can continue out and maybe reconnect to the highway. You know, maybe this one goes around and re reconnects to the highway to add a second access point down here, because access is very important if you're trying to avoid um, traffic trouble. But that is very respectful to road hierarchy. I like the one-way roads connecting these two and then how it turns into very local, bi-directional, small roads on the coast. You don't want to waste all your, all your coastal space. Like at this point, <laughs> I know that this was about city starts, and it is, but I think that the takeaway here is that your city start should be planning ahead for future expansion and future plans and kind of starting with with some idea of what you might what you might want to do overall. Of course, I would have these all connect, make make some blocks out of that. These can all connect. And there we go. That was a very expensive one, I'm sure. But this would be a highly effective little road system to, to start with. But yeah, those are those are the ideas that I have for today. Respect road hierarchy, plan ahead. Uh, you can always bring the highway into your city and make a diamond interchange, that's totally fine. Or a partial cloverleaf, totally fine as well. Uh, you can take that highway, reduce it to a roundabout, like that second example that we showed where you you essentially take the the noisiness and the busyness of the highway and reduce it to a roundabout. That's that's great as well. Or you can kind of taper the highway off like we have in this example here, the Virginia Beach method, as I'll dub it, uh, and taper it off until it's no longer highway and it's just one-way roads kind of traipsing through this gridded network that you have. The trick here being to keep it balanced and make sure that you have the same number of roads going in one direction as you have the other direction just to keep things the directionality of, of traffic very, very balanced. That is all I've got for today. Everyone, thanks for hanging out. Have a lot of fun playing City Skylines. Um, shout out to everyone who just got the game. Big congrats. You're, you're in for a wild ride. And a big shout out to everyone who's come back and still enjoys these videos after, after all these years. I could not do this without you. Everyone, thanks for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.